Hello, my name is Shane Rich. I'm the technical director at RBH Sound. And today I'd like to introduce you to one of our subwoofer amplifier products. This is our SA500 DSP+. Plus. This is really a high quality piece of equipment. Uh, you can notice by the heft of this, uh, it's uh, really quite a bit different than typically what you might see out there for a Class D amplifier, and that's because we use an analog uh, power supply, which has a large toroidal transformer. One of the reasons we use the analog supply in this amplifier is that typically a Class D amplifier, which has a switching supply, switching supply will only last for maybe five, seven years at most, uh, because of the circuitry and uh, how it operates. That's the reason that we've stuck with an analog supply in this particular product uh, to give it much higher longevity and it's going to provide the power that you need for your subwoofer. This particular amplifier is rated at 500 watts output continuous. It has peak capability of uh, over a thousand watts into four ohms and will actually drive a uh, subwoofer uh, down to two ohm load and is two ohm stable although we really recommend it just for use with a four ohm subwoofer uh, as the minimum impedance. So now let's jump into the features of this amplifier. When we first turn it on, we'll see a screen that shows us the uh, response or setting of the EQ, which is set to flat. We'll see the mode uh, of the uh, LFE input. In this case, it's set to subwoofer. Uh, and while this is powering a subwoofer, in most cases, we will want to configure this amplifier so that all of the crossover work is configured um, not in the amplifier itself, but in your AV receiver or processor. So first and foremost, you'll want to go to the mode select, which in this case defaults to the sub setting, which is starred, and uh, that activates the low pass filter and the subwoofer, which again, in most cases, you will not be using. Uh, there are filters in this amplifier that uh, are there in case you don't have filter capability upstream in your audio equipment. So we will want to set this to the LFE mode. Um, and now you can see um, the input circuitry on this amplifier will uh, play the full range of those frequencies. So when you have a filter at 80 hertz set on your processor receiver for the subwoofer and you have this configured in the sub setting for an 80 hertz filter, you're doing what we call double stacking the filters. You're putting one 80 hertz filter on top of another 80 hertz filter and so you have a much steeper overall roll-off rate and that really affects the integration between your subwoofer and main speakers. Let me go show you what I mean. Let's talk a little about what happens when you uh, double stack filter system. So here we have a crossover um, low pass filter for the subwoofer. These are the frequencies. We'll say our crossover point here is at 80 hertz. And the subwoofer plays all the frequencies below 80 hertz down to, you know, below 20 hertz. Um, at 80 hertz, we start rolling off those higher frequencies and passing over to and crossing over to the receiver or the main speaker.
these two curves should be symmetric or similar in shape or roll off rate. What happens if you have two filters stacked on top of each other? So you're using the sub, uh, sub amplifier 80 hertz filter along with the 80 hertz filter that is in your receiver processor is that the rate of attenuation will be steeper. When the, you have the steeper attenuation, the overall frequency response, instead of being flat, will have a dip and look maybe something like that at 80 hertz. So we don't want that. We, we want to maintain a very uniform, even frequency response. And in order to do that, we have to have the same rate of roll off on our, uh, high, on our high pass filter as our low pass filter. If by chance you would like to use the low pass filter for a subwoofer, possibly for configuring the subwoofer in a stereo system where your main speakers are playing down to a certain uh, point and then you want to transition to a subwoofer, you would need to change the mode select um, menu to subwoofer. Uh, it will be denoted by the star there and now it shows sub on your main uh, screen. Then when we go to the next menu setting, you'll see the crossover setting. And here you can adjust where you would like that low pass filter to be engaged at. Uh, we'll say maybe our stereo satellite speaker plays down to 60 hertz and we want to set this at 60 hertz. And the crossover is a uh, minus 12 dB per octave. Now here with the next setting in, we can change the slope of that filter. We have the option of 12 dB per octave, which is the default, 18 dB per, B per octave, or 20 D, four, or 48 dB per octave. So we'll leave it at 12 dB per octave. That's typically um, what you would want to use if you were going to use this crossover to transition uh, to a sealed satellite speaker. Uh, if you have a vented satellite speaker, you may want to go to the 18 or 24 dB per octave setting. Next menu item we have is the EQ mode. And we can choose flat, which is what we have set at here. We have EQ1, EQ2, EQ3, up through EQ4, or a user adjustable EQ. Um, the first four settings are a predetermined curve that has been uh, mapped into the amplifier that will provide optimal performance for an RBH subwoofer, a matching RBH subwoofer. Uh, this will be detailed and explained in the manual of the subwoofer and the manual of the uh, SA500 amplifier. And would ask you to refer to that um, for the specific setting you will want to use for the sub the RBH subwoofer that you have. So the last setting in the EQ mode is the user adjustable setting, which will take us into the setup for the user EQ. This is where we'll be able to configure a number of graphic equalizer bands that will allow us to either cut or boost the bass at these predetermined frequencies. We have 20 hertz, 25 hertz, 31 hertz, 40 hertz, 50, 63, 80, 100, and 125 hertz. So if you have a need to use the graphic equalizer, you'll want to go to the user setting in the EQ mode, enter the setup, and configure the settings for each specific band at that point. To use the EQ settings on the amplifier most effectively, 
you're going to want to have measurement equipment and uh, we'll address that in a future video. In addition to the uh, EQ setting and the uh, LFE channel input setting, you'll also see the volume, uh, which in this case comes up as a default at zero dB. That's the highest volume uh, that you can set the amplifier for. So we'll naturally want to turn this down um, before you plug it in to your source and or subwoofer just to make sure it's playing at a moderately loud level and, and not too loud. So as we scroll through here, uh, the, the menu, we first come to the subsonic frequency setting. This is default, set, uh, the default setting is at 20 hertz. Uh, you can lower that to flat if you would like. Um, and that will give you frequencies all the way down into the teens out of the amplifier. Um, or if you have a smaller subwoofer, you may want to change uh, the high pass filter, which rolls off the low frequencies going to the subwoofer at a higher frequency, all the way up to 40 hertz. That means your subwoofer would play down to 40 hertz and not really much below that would start rolling off. Uh, that would be for a smaller subwoofer that doesn't have as much output capability at base frequencies. If you hear your subwoofer overloading when you're, it's playing the very lowest frequencies, um, then instead of hearing that constant overload from the subwoofer, uh, uh, from an acoustic standpoint, you may want to just filter that out so you're getting cleaner bass at higher frequencies and not having to listen to, to you know, low frequency distortion uh, where the subwoofer is being overdriven. The next screen we see in the menu setting is the phase adjustment. The phase adjustment is default set to zero and in most cases that's where you'll want to leave it. Although uh, this feature is commonly found on most subwoofer amplifier uh, plate amplifiers on the back of subwoofers. And um, if you so desire, you can actually change this uh, from zero to a higher setting and just listen to see if you can tell how the subwoofer and main speakers are integrating with each other. The ideal again is to have a measurement system to be able to do this, but there's no harm in putting on your favorite track that has bass and uh, just listening, see if you can tell in the kick drums or the mid bass region um, what sounds best. Then we have the memory store option. You can just choose which memory you're wanting to use. If you were to push the memory one, push the main button uh, or control, then it would store everything you have for configuration in the menu into that specific memory. The next menu setting is the night mode. In most cases, you'll want to have this feature disabled because you want to be able to hear the full range of dynamics in the recording, the movie you're watching, uh, and so, Again, we recommend that you leave that setting disabled unless you have a specific case where you're wanting to make sure your volume is at a lower level. The auto off setting is default disabled, but if you'd like to enable this, then the amplifier, when it no longer senses a signal from your receiver or processor, will turn off after a specific amount of time anywhere from five minutes all the way up to 30 minutes. Um, if you end up using the auto off feature, the next time the amplifier senses a signal, it will turn back on. The back of the amplifier, we have to begin with the input through the balanced XLR connector or an RCA uh, line connector. 
You also have a line output and balanced output. If you're using more than one of these amplifiers, you can daisy chain the signal to the second amplifier. We have the 12 volt trigger uh, input jack, uh, which would connect to another piece of equipment uh, that would send a 12 volt signal here to turn the amplifier on and off. Then we have the ground terminal. This is where you would connect a piece of wire that would go from uh, one amplifier to another amplifier. If you had a second uh, DSP 500 amplifier, if you were having any kind of ground loop noise, any hum coming through the uh, AC. We have the IR input. The IR input allows you to uh, use a remote IR sensor uh, and send the codes through to the amplifier. Uh, this is maybe a situation where you have the amplifier in a separate room and you're wanting to make adjustments uh, through that external IR sensor into the amplifier for control. The subwoofer output terminal, positive and negative, are for connecting your subwoofer. The dimmer switch allows you to variably adjust the light on the display on the front and uh, it comes out of the box with it full on but if the light is too bright then you can set that uh, all the way to completely off if you so desire. If you have the need for an external amplifier to power a passive subwoofer, this RBH SA500 DSP will ensure that you get the very best performance possible out of your subwoofer.